I'm 13 Disciple, and this is Coach's Corner. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, today we are reviewing a replay by Almighty Johnson on Overlord. So he's in his GSOR, and uh, well, it's the famous beach map. All right, let's get into it by checking the tank lineup first. All right, so <clears throat> what we notice here is that we've got three sniping tank destroyers. So we'll note that we have three lights, a lot of flexible mediums, a flexible heavy, and a hull down heavy with one artillery. So with that information, let's take a look at the minimap. Okay, so let's talk about tank destroyers. So on this map, it's typical for a sniping tank destroyer to sit back here. And he pretty much has this kind of vision and coverage on the map. It's also typical for them to sit in this area, which gives them another wide angle of fire through this way. So there's a lot of overlapping tank destroyer coverage. There's only three, but that's where I would expect the majority of them to be is in this area here and maybe one up there. Okay, in terms of lights and mediums, I expect the lights and the mediums to play this ridge. I expect them to maybe play this ridge. And sometimes they'll come down in this area. And it's possible some will probably go down through the beach. Um, in terms of their, they've got one heavium. I expect him maybe to come down here. I expect their assault tank destroyer, that Yag Tiger, to definitely come down into this area here. He can play this rock, he can play that rock. This area here is where I expect them to be brawling it out. Um, so from your perspective, generally there's not too many spotting things to do on this map. The GSOR is more pro or is better at uh, passive spotting than active spotting. So I'd probably pick one of the bushes in this ridge line and post up maybe this one, but more than likely is I would go right in this area here because that gives me the widest field and I can definitely spot everything in these bushes here except for maybe this one because everything will be quadruple bushed to this way so I might actually try for a bush more this side so that I can spot directly through those bushes so anyways let's uh let's get to rocking and rolling here so guys if you'd like to send in your replay to have it reviewed on coach's corner uh, in the description will be a link to my discord Inside my Discord, there is a channel called Coach's Corner, and that's where I'll be looking for replays. Remember that it's got to be from the current patch cycle in order for me to view it. And I know there's a patch coming this week, so keep that in mind that you're going to be running the latest patch on the replays that you're submitting. Okay, so yeah, this is probably where I would be going, definitely in a, in a GSOR on this map. Knocking down a tree for some cover. And it looks like you're rotating in order to get out in case you're spotted early. That's solid play right there. I hear Binox and possibly a camo net there. So we're basically just set up. So one thing I would note, um, you're zoomed all the way in on this tank here. Um, and you're not, I don't think you're planning on firing. Maybe if he pulls forward, you'll plan on fire it. Um, I would stay fully aimed and zoom out so that I have better kind of like peripheral vision on what's going around me because if I take the shot I might get immediately spotted and I want to back off the hill immediately if that's the case. So you took the shot. This 1390 probably spotted you. I'd be bailing off the hill right now. No, nope, he didn't spot you. So I would have, wow, you were just looking around and zoomed in all the way. Um, I probably would have driven off just assuming I was spotted. That way I'd be safe from tank destroyers in the back. But I guess you didn't get spotted for firing that shot, which is surprising to me. There's that batch out there. Almost had a shot on him. Just sent in the middle. Okay, so there's the Yag doing his brawling. Yet a lot of guys go beach. Let's um actually let's take a let's take a second and talk about talk about the beach. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so beach on Overlord. What basically happens on the beach is just a big old brawl where very little assistance happens from anywhere else on the map. 
So sometimes artillery will come down here to get better shots. Sometimes they'll go up here. Those are usually the two places you'll find artillery on Overlord. Um, but basically the problem here is that once you win the beach, there's very little more you can do, especially if you're not in a very fast tank. If you come up this way, right, you think, oh man, I can get all this crossfire shots, right? But then you have tank destroyers shooting you from here. You have base defenders shooting you from here and you have these guys that'll turn around and shoot you and if you don't have enough tanks on this side to get pressure going this way what will happen is these reds will just drive at you okay and then your green tanks here won't push in to get damage as they retreat and what you'll end up having is you'll just take a whole bunch of damage in this area or if you try to retreat there's no cover in this area. They can just sit and control the engagement on these ridge lines, and you cannot approach unless you expose your entire tank the entire way up. So in this particular case, and most cases on Overlord, it is very hard to push up here or up here with good and efficient trades. Typically, I will never go beach on Overlord. Um, not always the case. Sometimes later in a match, if especially in a, in a high mobility tank like uh, the GSR that you're running right now, doing something like this can be helpful or going, you know, to get cap pressure can be helpful. So sometimes the beach is a good option, but for the most part, a lot of the battle just takes place over here. And if you can take this area, you will control this whole part of the map and you'll be able to get crossfire into the remaining tanks. So. Basically, once you've won the beach, it doesn't really offer you a lot of advantages. And if you're stuck brawling down here, eventually this fight will be decided and then the victors will come over here and destroy whoever is losing. So typically going beach doesn't really result in a deciding of the match. Usually it's just a brawl and then whoever wins will then push through and then lose. Sometimes they'll get cat pressure. It's not always the case. But that's what I find pretty typical on uh, on the Overlord Beach play. So see, you're just hunting, waiting for shots, waiting for something to happen. It's fine. So their Caravan went beach 40. So it's a pretty even beach brawl going on right now. So I'm not too concerned with it. This is Salon just kind of waiting for something to happen. It's good to not be too aggressive right now. Your LHM is going up to the... Oh, there's a T1 LPC. Could have had a shot there. That's fine to be conservative, especially when you're trying to play a spotting role. I see the T10 coming around to your left. Yeah, you might have shots on that T10 right now. Oh, he's backing off again now. The 5100 is moving, which makes me think the T10 either had shots on him or the Kanon and Jagdpanzer is having shots and you just can't spot him. I probably would have taken that shot there and backed off. Ooh, Progetto, you should have a shot there. I think you might have damaged him. That might have, that T10 is still within your purview of shooting. Yeah, you're probably going to need gold to go through his uh, upper plate, but you could probably do it. Canona 105 is spotted. Okay, so your team is pushing out on the zero line, surprisingly. That's good though. You have a Patton, you have an STRV up there, and a T34 working the ridge. Okay, so let's look at the mini map again and talk about where where you should probably end up going. Okay, so you have this T34 looking this direction for damage. You have this Patton who can shoot out this way. You have this STRV which probably has pretty good Overwatching fire, and you have this LHM which has pushed up pretty far, providing spot for everything in this area, right? So if I was your TL1 LPC or you, what I would be doing is heading up into this little ridge line here, you reversing into it with just peeking my gun over and looking for damage into this area here. So once you get into this area, you'll be proxying this Kanon and Jagdpanzer and whoever else sits here. And if you're proxying them, either your artillery will have shots on them or your LHM might decide to take a sh take a shot. He, he won't last long there, I, I wouldn't think. But if you just use the very top of your gun just to poke up enough, 
you might be able to get damage on these targets out here, right? Um, without taking a whole lot in return because you're a very small target, you're very quick too. So if you're just kind of moving around in this area, proxying this Kanonian Jagdpanzer, you might be able to do damage. You could also look this way for the scent when reversing up that hill. But basically, once my team has kind of moved up into this area even a little bit, you can take this and force these guys into a crossfire because of this positioning that you have here. And even if they dive on you, so let's talk about worst case scenario. Somebody pushes up over and onto you. You have a T-34 here. The M46 could move, but probably not. This 5100 has a big clip, and you have the TL-1 LPC that can help you as well. So, And you're quick, so you can GTFO pretty fast if you need to, but... That's where I would probably be looking for, for shots right now. Yeah, look at this. Look at this. So even now, all of these tanks have backed off because of these guys pushing up. If you get into this position and shoot at this Kanon Jagdpanzer, you'd probably kill him. He's only a two shot for you right now, or a one shot if you had HE. Eat or kill the proc, the progetto in the back would work too. And so what would happen is you would either take these heavies here and draw them back, and you'll get damage out here, and you'll force them even further back. So that's really strong map control that can work for you right now. Your 5100's a one shot though, he still needs help. That 4202 is a one shot. There's a lot of low health tanks on the board right now that we could be getting damage on. Your Patton has moved up. Your STRV is still up there. Your LHM is up there. So your TL1 is still hesitating on going in. I would still say it's a good play. Okay, so here's why it's an even better play right now. Okay, look at this. So your team won the beach, okay? And they're gonna be looking to get up here or they're gonna be looking to get up here. I, I mean, obviously they won't because these guys are now lit for them. But like, if you come up right into this area, you now have shots on them as they try to push onto your beach allies. Or if they try to go this way, you'll have shots. Like, you'll have shots for days on a lot of tanks in this area right now. And that's a super important position to have right now. Because you can put a lot of pressure on the map just in those bushes alone. It doesn't take much. A shot of damage here and there, like that... Okay, so that's another thing I want to point out. Let me um, zoom out a little bit here. Okay, so because there's this line of bushes here, every time this Kanona Jagdpanzer fires, you won't spot him because he's like a million times bushed. If you were sitting in these bushes here, you probably would spot him when he fires, when he's in these bushes, right? So like that's a difference between, you know, just being a little bit off angle so you don't have to try and view through all these bushes bushes here and also if you had come up here and proxied him he wouldn't have worked that ridge and your 5100 might still be alive okay so i see you now contemplating on taking map control like your team has so much map control right now it is imperative that you guys take this ridge line right now your t34 needs to move up here your tl1 lpc actually could be working this ridge line too like having this ridge line would give you the rest of the pressure that you need to remove the remaining enemies from this game. All right, I see it trying to thinking about moving in now. So you could be working that ridge like a boss right now. Still, you'd be getting damage on the TL1 LPC, possibly this AMX. I'd be looking for kill shots. Even though that Kanoni Jagdpanzer is there, he's not a huge threat because you'll just be getting proxy spotted. And your profile is so small that if you just dab that gun up there and get a shot off, somebody is probably not going to be able to hit you very well. I would be considering diving on that Kanoni Jagdpanzer right now, or trying to work this ridge from this side like the T-34 is, but it's not all that helpful. FV is a one shot, the Kanoni is a two shot. TL1 LPC is a three shot. Like, there's a lot of low health tanks right now we could be trying to get pressure on. I see if trying to see if you got a shot there, but he's behind a building. You need to take out the Kanona Jagdpanzer and then work that ridge, is what you need to do. So, something I want to point out I know this tank doesn't have a lot of shells, 
but I would still try and carry one, maybe two HE shells. Because if you got behind this Kanon and Jagdpanzer, I mean, even frontally, you could probably pen him with HE. And that could be the difference between a one shot or a two shot of damage. Still thinking about going. You're hesitating too much. I would just go. Take the risk. If you if you skirt, circle in behind him, you probably won't take damage. Because you'll catch him by surprise. I already tried to get a shot in, but missed. These so so what's happening? <laughs> I keep pausing it. But what's happening right now is these guys are getting crossfired. Like I said, he this Yag Tiger is pushing this way. These heavies are going this way. These guys have no cover over here. Somebody from the middle needs to get shots this way, this way. Like I, th I think your TL1 LPC is trying to do it too. These guys aren't so much in a crossfire, but this Bat Chat is still proxying them. Like th these guys have won the beach and they're just going to lose all their hit points for very little if the rest of the team doesn't try to make pressure on these guys that are in a potential crossfire. All right, we're going for the cannon. That's a good call. You spotted artillery too, which is nice. See, if that was an HE round, you might have killed him. You got so lucky. Oh, nice fast repair. That's solid. I'd be looking for my second shot already. He should be dead. He's probably farmed a little too much already. Kanoni Agpanzer is fleeing. I'd still be trying to kill him right now. He's a one shot too. Where did he go? I see you looking for him. That was a bold line. T10. Yeah. Oh man, look at this. Look at this guy. You got shots there. You got shots there. You got shots there. I'd be looking for maybe a kill over here. The T10 is not paying attention to you. He's more focused this way. So is this Yag Tiger. And you're not gonna be able to kill them very quickly. I'd be trying to maybe help this object 430 with the uh with this guy right here. And maybe artillery. And this scent is going this way. He's not looking at you. You could even get shots on him. You want to be looking for unreturnable damage. The trouble is this T10 is clearly traveling this way and he's going to have shots on you. So you probably want to get out of this position pretty quickly. Looking for shots on the T10. Nice damage. I'd keep running. I'd hug this ridge though, because the T10 is going to get damage on you. Yeah. So here's the thing. I guess that scent is also going to get damage on you, but you know that these guys are all preoccupied. So hugging this ridge this way isn't going to cause you to take damage from them. And it's going to give you cover from the T10 and the 7-1. So the micro positioning of just hugging this ridge line would probably have saved you maybe 446 because this Yag Tiger on your left is not going to turn in time to get a shot on you. So if you hugged this ridge line all the way around, you might have avoided that shot of damage. Yeah. Oh well. You did what you could. I'd still be looking at cleaning up the 9-0 line here. Target unlocked. They're Kanoni Panzer YOLO'd back to the beach. He's still a one-shot. I'd maybe be looking to kill the beach right now. No, he's coming back up, it turns out, actually. Never mind. So you may be considering this T10. I'd be preloading APCR right now just for the higher penetration. Oh, unlucky. See, APCR might have gone through that, to be honest. T34 is coming up. Is he going to be looking at you? Yeah, he's looking for you. That was a good, that was a big kill right there, but you lost your KR during that. The FV is still a one shot. Your Yag is coming up behind you. Okay, it's looking a lot less like a win now. That Yag is a one shot. The T34 might be able to kill him, actually, especially if he spends all his time turning. Oh, the T34 just took a hit from the SU. All right, I see you diving deep, trying to get this kill. That's good. Isolate, kill the isolated targets as best as you can. There's that 7-1 in the middle. He's going to kill your T-34, probably. He spotted the STRV, which took damage. Can you try and get a shot on the scent? Oh my gosh, how lucky is your team that that artillery just did that. 
Holy smokes. I mean, you lost your T-34 dot there are to somebody on their team. What was it? The Kanoni Jagdpanzer, who should still be dead right now. But that was huge. This is still a winnable match. So we know that the Batchat's a one-shot. The Kanon and Jagdpanzer is a one-shot. Um, I don't remember what these were, but I know they weren't full health. Even though there's only two of you left, I mean, it's still definitely winnable. You just have to set up in such a way that you can spot for your tank destroyer safely. So again, this is the place you want to be because it's going to provide you a decent amount of vision around this map. And it's going to give your tank destroyer in the back um, stuff to shoot at. There's the SU. If you had HE rounds, you could kill him in three, definitely. You might mess up his crew and stuff too. So dip to the right and you'll come up behind him. Okay, so these guys went all the way along the beach, killed your artillery and are heading this way. So your STRV as a reaction is turning around to try and defend himself, which is fine. Oh, you've got the back of this SU in 30 PM. You've got this guy. Closing quickly. Okay. Let's talk about this really quick. So he's not too, you got 16 seconds. If you get a reload, one more shot, and then one more reload, you'll kill him while your STRV deals with these guys behind you. So if you just sit behind this tank, you could probably isolate and kill him. The only, the only thing that may not work is if he drives up this ridge. If he drives up the ridge, then his allies will have shots at you. But if you stay behind his tank, he doesn't have a fully traversable turret. You could kill him here. I think it's doable. Okay, he is going up the ridge and you're just interested in leaving. Okay, that's fine. If you sat behind him though, you might have been able to kill him. All right, your STRV dealt with the one shot, so this is still very winnable. I see you falling back. You're very much afraid of that SU-130 PM. He should be afraid of you though. You have mobility on your side. Okay, this isn't a bad setup. So what's happening is your STRV is probably going to get into this bush line to have shots on this wider area while the SU might come up in here somewhere. And you'll definitely spot him when he does. So now we're just being patient. We're camping. We're waiting for something to happen. You're running low on time though, there's only five minutes left. And you guys definitely have uh, a winnable game here, for sure. It's been a while since the STRV and Amex have been spotted, so they really could be almost anywhere on the map. Apart from the areas that you're spotting, obviously. So they could be maneuvering up the uh, beach to get onto your cap, that's true. Okay, there's the SU. I'll be going in behind him right now. Right now. I'd be taking this route to get behind this ridge up this way, and then I'll have shots going that way from the back of that ridge. I'd be going up after him right now. I wouldn't be wasting time. You know where he is, you know what direction he's moving, so you know that his gun cannot traverse behind him fast enough for you to get a shot off. So you're just trying to be patient. If you had more time on the clock, but I would be playing aggressive right now, trying to get a gun out of the game here. Good tracking shot by your ally. Now get going. Okay, so what do you do now? All right, let's, let's take a look at the mini map. You have an STRV, you have you, and you have these two tanks that you don't know where they are. If I were to guess, this STRB has been here all game. If he hasn't already moved up, he's still back here. I don't think he's moved at all. And I think the AMX, if anything, is playing somewhere in this area, especially now that their support here is gone. I mean, he might be coming up on your cap, but you've got plenty of time. If you, if you see the cap starting to be capped, then you know where he is. You don't actually need to look in this area to know if he's there. So what you need to do is post up in here Tell your STRV to get somewhere on these on this ridge line here, okay? 
I know that communicating with your team doesn't always work. So I would say, you know, Sturve, and then I would click the map right in this square. The square is what? Echo 7. Go here. And then what I would do is I would come up through here and I would just get straight on cap and just get cap pressure. There's an area right here on the cap where you can sit behind a building and soft cover where you can spot this. And if your STRV is here, so if you're here, you can spot the incoming tanks, okay? And if your STRV is up here, he can cover you with crossfire, okay? That's how you get the pressure to win the game. And you gotta do it relatively quickly. There's only four minutes and you capping alone is pretty long time. So it looks like you're going back to just defend your cap or make sure that there's nobody there. You don't need to though, because if they get on cap, you'll know. So you're, you're basically gathering extra information that maybe you didn't need. So I guess potentially if you did what I told you to do and someone came up behind your STRV, that could be pretty bad. But this is still a lot of time that I feel like we're wasting in the game. All right, we did this sweep, that's fine. Now you can feel pretty comfortable that you can take the positions that I mentioned earlier. Okay, I see you going beach. So it looks like you're gonna go towards their cap for that cap pressure I mentioned earlier. It's just you're wasting a lot of time going beach, okay? So here's the thing. What What's the difference between doing this and then doing this, right? So doing this way gets you there a lot faster and you save time, okay? Doing this way gets you there safer, but you waste a lot of time and you don't really add benefit, right? So let's say there is somebody down here. If that AMX is down here, he might be able to clip you out and then your STRV can't help you at all, right? You don't want to be isolated from your ally. If you come across here, at least you might be able to duck into cover or have your ally help you. He might move up, especially because of that. So this doesn't really offer you any benefit over just going straight this way, okay? So if he is down here and you go straight this way, the same thing happens. You sit on cap, you sit behind this bush and you wait. If your STRV is somewhere in, the, in this brush line here, he still has total overwatch, right? So even if he, he's beach, he sees that he's got somebody on cap and he comes back. So if this guy then comes back this way or this way, you just have to drive up cap and drive around this piece of cover that's right here, right? And just wait for your STRV to help and get shots every time you can. The best way to win the game is to get cap pressure on because if either of you drive at them, you'll just end up dying because it's a really high camo tank destroyer and a high camo autoloader. You're better off drawing them into you and the only way you can get them out of their little nest is cap pressure. By putting cap pressure on, you give them a choice. You say, Either you come to me, or you lose the game. Yeah, we're really scooting along the beach. That's fine. I mean, you still have three minutes. You still have enough time to get on the cap and get that cap pressure rolling. I see your STRV is moving up, taking advantage of the knowledge that you've given him. So by driving around down here and by driving all the way up here, he knows that there's nothing really in this area and he feels safe enough to move up. Got pretty good zone of control here. You're gonna let your binox go. Yeah, not super useful. So here's the bush I was talking about. Let's um I don't want to zoom in. We just want to pause it. That's the wrong button. There we go. Okay, so here's the bush that you want is this one here. So if you get into this bush, you get cat pressure going, and you have hard cover and you have concealment. So you have concealment that gives you all the spotting that you need. If you get lit, you have hard cover you can run behind. And then if your SDRV eventually gets up here, he will have crossfire into anybody that's headed this way, right? That's where you want to be right now. Is he looking for more binos? I don't think you're gonna be able to cut through their camo even with binos at this distance. It's better to get on cap. See, your STRV has got perfect positioning. He knows how to play his tank. He's got excellent positioning. All he needs from you is cap pressure. With cap pressure, you draw them in. 
I see you still kind of hesitating, trying to get spotting. Okay, there's less than two minutes left. You have to get on cap now or the cap pressure won't matter and they're just gonna let it go to a draw. You wasted too much time going beach and you're wasting too much time by not adding cap pressure to the game. With cap pressure, they'll come at you and you can be in the bush. Okay, you have a one shot AMX in front of you. That's all right. You tried to snapshot. The shell velocity didn't work in your favor there. I would still be looking for cap pressure. I can't believe you weren't spotted, by the way. I'd still be going for cap pressure right now. Because then it'll force him to come at you, and the STRV has cross shots. Same thing with the remaining STRV. It's too late to get cap pressure now, but if you had gotten it earlier in the match, you would definitely be in a winning condition for sure. Is he going for the AMX? He doesn't realize you're behind him, I don't think. He's clearly not turning his turret for you. Oh, he's figured it out. It's too late. Okay, there's one minute left and there's two of you. What you guys need to do is just drive straight at him. Don't do anything else. Just go straight at that STRV. Because even if he kills you, I mean, you can get in there, you can track him. You won't be able to overmatch his frontal armor, but if you get in there and you can track him, you can get behind him and then allow your ally to come in. But even if he kills you, at least you're trying to win the game. Don't let him sit there in the back, invisible. Just drive straight at him right now. So I see you circling around. It looks like you're trying to come at him from a different angle. You don't have enough time to make this play. You have to just go, you just have to press W at him. You've wasted 20 seconds out of your 60 remaining. See, the STRV is driving straight at him. He knows that you either have to kill him or lose or draw. I call a draw a lose in this situation. This is 100% winnable and you've just wasted way too much time trying to be safe about it. At this point, you can take two shots from him and still live. You should have just driven straight at him. 100%. Yeah. This is, a, this is a bit of a bummer. Definitely could have won this. He's not, yeah, see, he's, he won't even be looking at you. Two more shots and you'll, you'll have them, but you're, you've run out of time. I see you trying to get a little bit of ram in there, but it didn't work. He's too heavy. Oh man, this was, uh, this was a little bit of a letdown, but you know what? It, it, it was good to, good to know what to do in the future. So, I mean, I just want to point out you have... 679, I mean, you can take at least one hit and still be alive. Once you killed this AMX that was down here, you needed to just dive at this guy straight on, take one hit and try and track one of his wheels, and then just get behind him and just keep trying to damage him, waiting for your other STRV to come in and, and get the finishing shot on him. So this is definitely winnable. I mean, it was a good showing. You made a lot of good choices. You just needed to make some of them a little bit sooner. All right, guys, Almighty Johnson, thank you so much for sending this in, and uh, we'll see you on the next Coach's Corner. Have a good one.